Hey, thanks for joining in for this devotional this evening. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving this past week. Maybe you get to spend some time with people. Uh, I read an article by Philip Yancey. He's written a lot of books that I've enjoyed. He's got also got this blog that he uh, writes for maybe once every couple weeks. And um, anyway, this week he wrote about wrote an article called A Melancholy Thanksgiving, just kind of reflecting on his experience at Thanksgiving this year. It was kind of interesting to read his perspective. There's an appropriate time for us to think about giving thanks. It's all the time. <laughs> Sometimes we're maybe more prone to reflect on it than others. And uh, this is one of those times. I want to share a couple of thoughts with you. I want to go to Philippians 4, one of my favorite books, one of my favorite chapters in one of my favorite books. And Paul's writing from prison, just a, just a quick recap of what's going on here. I shared a devotional with you a few weeks back from the last part of the chapter. I'm going to kind of go to the first part of the chapter and say a couple things about what he says about Thanksgiving. So he's writing from prison. He's going to get out uh, sometime in a few months after he writes this letter. He is maybe chained to a Roman soldier, some evidence of that. And uh, he is, it's a, it's a tough situation. I mean, even though this wasn't quite like the imprisonment he's gonna have later on in the Mamertine prison, that's the one where he is when he writes Second Timothy. Now he ends up losing his life as a result of that one. So this isn't quite that bad. This is, this, he's got a little bit more freedom in the sense that he can have guests and all that. Now, I say all that to, to say this, he's in a bad situation and yet this, is, this letter is incredibly optimistic. And um, at the first part of the last chapter of the book, he says this, verse four, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. I, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer in, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love that little paragraph there, especially when I think about Paul in that jail and can't leave. He is completely dependent on the kindness of others for his sustenance and, and uh, you know, no freedom. He doesn't know exactly what the future holds. And yet he writes this optimistic letter. And it's interesting that he's writing as a prisoner to free people in Philippi. And yet he's encouraging them to be optimistic, to be joyful. This blows my mind, you know? Uh, but since this is Thanksgiving week, this past week, and as we enter into this holiday season, uh, I think it's appropriate for us to think just for a minute about this. When he says, don't be anxious about anything, <laughs> Paul, if anybody had reason to be anxious, it would have been Paul, but he's telling them, don't be anxious about anything. Rejoice always. He says, the Lord is at hand. And that, that jumped out at me as I was reading it because I was thinking about Paul and there's this, there's this guess, this kind of a supposition that Paul was chained to a Roman jailer when he wrote this. And that's fascinating that he's got this jailer, you know, around the clock, who's right next to him. And of course they would switch jailers, but he's got a jailer right next to him all the time and he says, the Lord is at hand. Well, he's got the jailer at, at hand, really close by, but he says, the Lord is at hand. That's, that's what his focus is on. How can we be thankful when things are a mess? How can we be optimistic when we're discouraged, when our external situation, our environment is not what we want it to be? How can we truly be thankful? How can we have peace? It's because the Lord is at hand. We're gonna sing some songs here in a couple of minutes and. Uh, just uh, maybe it's, maybe you need the reminder, maybe we all do, just to let our lives be characterized by gratitude. And he goes on down in this last part of the chapter, and, and he says, you know, I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. He says, God will supply all your needs. And that's the experience. And when we walk with Christ, our experience will consistently be that no matter what happens, God gives us what we need to be strong and to survive and to thrive. He, he helps us to make it through whatever. He, he keeps us kind of even. We aren't, we aren't weighed down too low by the burdens in, in, and we don't get too excited about the world's successes, you know? We've got this 
kind of an even kill. This He says earlier in the chapter, let your reasonableness, your moderation be known to all people. You're, you're sustained by the Lord because he's right there with you. So during this Thanksgiving, December, Christmas, New Year, this, this, uh, this time of year, and as we end uh, 2020, you know, as we get close to ending this year, and let's be thankful. There's never a time when Christians ought to be characterized by pessimism, or by hopelessness, because the Lord is at hand. You may be, you may have some other guest who's with you all the time, maybe chronic pain or maybe discouragement or, or maybe uh, uncertainty or anxiety. You've got these, um, these enemies that are close by, but he's even closer. He is at hand. Therefore, you can let your requests be made known with thanksgiving to God in Christ Jesus because he's close by. So let's sing together. Let's uh, let's pray together. Let's worship together and let's be grateful together. Let me pray and then we will sing some songs. Father, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. This time of year, our country celebrates Thanksgiving. And of course, for us as Christians, we are ought to be thankful all the time. We are thankful for the blessings that you've poured on this country. We thank you more than that for the blessings you've poured on us as your, your sons and daughters. We are forgiven. We are washed by the blood of Christ. We have hope. No matter what happens in the world, we've got hope. We thank you for that. Help us to live as people who are grateful. Help us to be known by our reasonableness, moderation, Father, help us not to be overwhelmed by anxiety, but to rejoice in all things and all things to rejoice. And for us to, with gratitude, let our requests be made known to you because we know you are very close by and help us to trust in that and believe it even more now than we ever have. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. He is good. For he is good. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. His love endures forever. His love will reign forevermore. His power will reign forevermore. His grace will reign forevermore. His peace will reign forevermore.
Sri 